I'm Carol Robinson. Welcome to this edition of County Happenings, where we talk with the mayor about what's happening in the county. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm not going to make a comment. How we could even you get want this. to so bad. <laughs> I know. I know. We took a couple of takes to get this show open this morning. <laughs> yeah. Busy time in Williamson County. Yes, sir. It's, it always is, but boy, there's some times where you just can't get a parking space. <laughs> That is for sure around here between the schools and elections mm -hmm. and getting your car tags. Mrs. Anderson told me uh, recently we had a full elected meeting sitting down just talking about a lot of the issues. Uh, we try to do that once a quarter. Uh, there are over 350 automobile tags, 350,000 automobile tags. And I think on some days they're all here. I've, yes. <laughs> I think today's And while I'm sitting here <laughs> talking about, we have put in other ways than coming here to get your car tags. Right. You could do them online. You can do them uh, the, the old-fashioned way in mail. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to pay a little bit more for them for us to put those um, but there is no extra cost unless you're getting new tag, uh, new metal plates. Uh, but you can do them online, snail mail, online. You can use credit card. We'll direct send them to you. We even now have kioshes in a lot of our parks and rec in Fairview where you live. Mm -hmm. You can go over there. Now, you still have to have your missions yeah. tested ahead of time. Uh, but there's more mission center testing than just in Cool Springs, one mm -hmm. in Brentwood, there's one, in one, Fairview. In, one in Fairview. It's open like two days a week. Two. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if you plan accordingly, mm -hmm. you don't have to come down here and stand in line on those last three to five days for the end of the month. <laughs> but who plans <laughs> anymore? <laughs> so when they're out in the line, when I come out of my office and I see that line is long, I go the other yeah. way. I'll walk away around the building because I know that conversation be, Mayor, can't you fix this? Yeah. And, uh, no, you can fix it. So we've, we've invested heavily yeah. in some other tools to get you your tags. It's kind of humorous, but then there's always just. And I, even the voting, the, the um, you know, it's uh, early voting's going on. And people can vote in. Any place in the county. Yes. But they like to come here. Yeah. So early voting has places uh, here at the complex. Mm -hmm. There is the Brentwood location and uh, a Fairview, the location. But once early voting is finished, and that will finish about a week before March 3rd. Right. Then everything is shut down. Those machines are then relocated. Not all of them, but the ones that are in for early voting, they'll be relocate, relocated to different precincts. And so your comment is so appropriate at this time. Chad Gray, who's our administrator of all of our elections, um, um, for the first time in Williamson County, we had about 44, 45 different precincts mm -hmm. or sites that you could go and vote. And if you lived in this area, you had to vote over here at this precinct. And if I lived here, I had to vote here. Right. And no matter where you worked, you had to do that. Yeah, that's right. Either first this or is last. the first year that you can take your new voter card or your old voter card and go on election day any place in the county to vote. You do not have to vote at your precinct. Which is going to be interesting. Well, yeah, we had 44, 45, 43 different places mm -hmm. to vote in. So we brought that number down to about 28 or 29. We had a few precincts that um, just didn't have the volume, didn't yeah. have the numbers. My precinct didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Mine would. <laughs> and Rutherford County piloted a program last year that allowed people to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So they kind of worked out some of those bugs. Uh, they had huge reviews that said that's the way to go and other counties now are doing it and we're we're next so we'll have some bugs i'm sure and there'll be some well i didn't know that that you could do that but for overall uh, some uh, there's about 12 let's see there's 13 or 14 sites closed but they're allowing you to vote anywhere if those sites weren't generating the volume like you said then they because they're costly to right. set up machine wise labor wise and to keep those things open so i'm excited about it that you you know you or i if you happen to drive in over the brentwood area or your fairview area just pull in and vote on yeah. that day you don't have to hurry back home and the big thing about it 
oftentimes, <clears throat> if you didn't vote by 12 o'clock, the conversation was, well, I'll vote on the way home. Mm -hmm. Well, oftentimes you got tied up in traffic right. or work, and then you... You either miss it or you're standing in a in long, long line. line. And so now you can kind of pick and choose the day, the loc I mean, not the day, the location of where you want to vote. Yeah. And early voting was started to augment some of that. And while it did, we, more people are moving in and, and more people are voting, I think. Yes. We normally have in uh, these are both Democratic and Republican primaries. And I've noticed the numbers coming in at our administrative complex. Of, and, and, and there's a report that's generated every day that kind of tells you the percentage of who voted uh, in the Democratic primary and who voted in the Republican primary. And it's a, believe it or not, it's about 50-50 mm -hmm. of the of people uh, voting. Now, the, the Democratic primary certainly has a, a lot more choices in who they want to vote. Uh, be in the Republican, excuse me, in the Democratic uh, primary, whereas the Republicans have one main individual and some lesser folks. I don't mean that the way it sounds. You just they're not known, right? Uh, and so it's going to be interesting because when the election time actually gets here in November, it's going to be. It's, it's going to be a large. Last time we voted, about, I think Chad indicated we had over 60% of the registered voters vote. So this should help eliminate some of those long, long lines. The other thing, at this particular local election, you're also picking your uh, school board members, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, your uh, property assessor. And coming up in August, where there is no Republican primary, that's the general election. Right. That will be held. And that's the, where you pick for a, the your local election. Mm -hmm. That's where you pick your school board members, mm -hmm. um, both Franklin Special and for Williamson County. Williamson County does it on odd years, mm -hmm. every every four years, even an odd run, so that you can't vote. You can't eliminate all twelve right. of them <laughs> in one swap uh, or one swap mm -hmm. uh, out there. So. You know, at the local level, you've got the sheriff going on through the Republican primary. You've got the, the property assessor in the Republican primary. Um, and they're the only ones running. No one's challenging them. Mm -hmm. But they'll roll forward and have to go through this again in August mm -hmm. when our state representatives, state senators, and the, some, of, some of the other local city judges. I yeah. mean, it gets... It, a, August is kind of fun funny because the state and national... That's well, their primary. That's their primary. But... For the local, that's that's it. Yeah, that's when that's they're it. actually confirmed for the jobs that began mm -hmm. on September one. Right now, you're just having to pick the men or women that you want to go forth to mm -hmm. in in uh, August. Yeah. Interesting. A uh, lot of discussion. Been. Why don't we have all these on the same day? Eliminate some of this confusion. Well, a lot of it is city election, county, state, feds finding a central date that's good. A lot of it is space. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Confusing, and particularly if you're not a political junkie like you or I, uh, you don't always keep up with it. <laughs> and that gives you a headache. I think yeah. I'm. I... <laughs> but we, you're trying to make it easier for people to yeah. vote. Uh, someday they'll have the ability to vote off your phone and vote off of my iPads and things like that when they can really secure the network. I know there's something for me. It's something fun about going into. Um, the voting machine and pulling the pulling the triggers, um, but it's also fun for, for me to go to the voting place location and and talk to people. Oh yeah, I mean a, a lot of times f out where we live, it's the only chance you get to see a lot of your neighbors is when you vote. <laughs> yeah, but the the generation, the millennials and Gen X, I think mm -hmm. that's what they're called. Uh, you know, they may not know as many of the people at the election because they haven't lived here as long. Right. Uh, but their set of friends are developing for the next 20-year cycle, and they'll feel that same way. They want to go and meet. Of course, a lot of them, when you and I had children in schools, uh, you met the parents right. <laughs> at the school functions. Yeah. And so that kind of carries through. Many of the people that have supported me over the years um, were people that I met when the children were in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and you get to 
you get to see them again. That's it's it's true. A lot of the people, a lot of my kids' parents, you know, they, we all have our own little. We went our ways once the kids grew up, but it's fun to see them and get caught up at the fair or at the lecture. Fair is another big item coming up, <laughs> Carol. We're on. Uh, we were about a week deep into our budget processes. Uh, we are. Um, actually meet with, I meet with each of our department heads and our elected, other elected officials to kind of see that everybody's in the guidelines. The guidelines are this year, um, only new personnel, uh, you have to justify that. Mm -hmm. it, like schools would justify it through growth. Uh, we are somewhere around 1,150 students more than we had last year, so they'll come in with their new numbers, what they think that's going to be. Which and, is pretty close to target. Yeah, it's pretty close to target. Um, you know, we've had as high as 15, 1,600, but we've been averaging mm -hmm. around 12 for the last five or six years. That's why we build schools, schools and cut ribbons. <laughs> and the latest one was on Gosey Hill. I forget the name of it. Uh, the new elementary school, mm -hmm. Creekside. Um, I don't remember. Creekside look good. They're nodding. <laughs> uh, and then we have a school on Oak, on Henpeck, the new middle school, right. and that will be all be opening in August of this year. And we're looking for land for two more. So we had ten schools to build. We've gotten three of them, and then we've enlarged schools like Page and. Mm -hmm. Um, I think about every school has been touched in some way. <laughs> it's, with all the schools that haven't been built, um, eventually it's going to be like when we first moved here. feels like 100 years ago now. Um, there was a church on every corner, and now we've got a school on every corner. <laughs> well, we have um, over seven, over 700 acres in Williamson County. And in preparing for a couple of speeches that I've done, I broke that down into... 700 acres of school? 700 acres of land, land. in Williams. 700,000 yeah. acres of land, excuse me. And how much of that land's in our municipalities in our cities? Mm -hmm. Of the six cities, about 92,000 acres are in our cities, total city population. So... When you think about the rest of that land is in the unincorporated area is now becoming a question that is, is talking about growth. Mm -hmm. So the budget processes we're going through now, we have 49 schools, we have 42 to 43,000 children in pub Williamson County public schools, not County Franklin Special. And we've got 230 to 230,000 people. So you've got, you've kind of, I've kind of laid the foundation for the conversation we're about to have. We are incorporated, we started as a mm -hmm. county in 1799. This is 2020. That's about 220 years. So it took us 220 years to get to the current population of 230, 235,000 people. The forecast for the next 25 years is 148% growth in population. So we're going to grow to 550,000 people in 25 years, or we're going to completely double what, in 20, 220 20 years, years to get to. And in 25 years, we're going to double it. So the inevitable question, you as a reporter, you as a taxpayer are saying, where are you going to put, put them? <laughs> and how are you going to fix traffic? Yeah. And what are you going to do to deal with this? Because a lot of that 700,000 acres of land is not buildable. No. A lot of slopes and mm -hmm. hills and valleys. And so that even the, the, scrunches, as yeah. my mother used to say, it <laughs> scrunches you that. down. So... You know, we are taking to the county commission, that's our legislative body, the 24 men and women that make up this whole county, and asking them to revisit our planning processes through a plan called the Comprehensive Plan. And if they approve that, then you follow that up with the zoning and looking at changing. So the, the plan is the over, oh, the whole, the whole, 
like you like to want to say, say 30,000 foot yeah. um, vision. And then, then you start making policy to, to fit that vision. That's exactly right. Good way to describe it. And currently throughout our county, mostly in the western part of our county, Fairview, Leapers Ford, that's five acres. Inside the cities, they have their own mm -hmm. regulations. On the eastern part of our county, Triune, College uh, Grove, College Grove, Nolensville, that area out there, for the most part in the unincorporated area, is one acre. Mm. Now, we do have a few five acres, but we're what, asking... What, what's, why is the difference? Well, back in 2007, it's the last time we did it, okay. a lot of people got cold feet about doing a five-acre track because of the economy. Uh, mm -hmm. Cost. And we didn't know the kind of data that we have today. So it was approved for certain areas to have five and some just leave them at one acre. Well, what's happened, the growth is, is jumped over the cities and the urban growth boundaries and gone to those one acre tracks because they can put in decentralized sewer systems and accommodate the, the mm -hmm. community. Because that was my next question. What do they do? The, the, the county is not in the sewer and water business. No. So how do you accommodate sewer and water in a rural area? Yeah. So the water, of course, is offered by about five or six different utility districts. And the sewer, you're either on septic tank or you're on one of these decentralized systems mm -hmm. that is regulated to the state. And there are several of those subdivisions. They're usually large in nature. They have to have a lot of land for the irrigation. It works on the same principles as septic tank. But the question you've got to have when you look at budgets, and I won't be around in 25 more years. Now, there's probably some out there saying good, and then they're probably saying... <laughs> you better be. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> but um, how are we going to deal with that massive amount of population or percentage growth. I think there's not going to be a whole lot of elbow room no. there. Well, you want to drive that growth to the cities. Because mm -hmm. cities can take their, they have the sewer to handle the density, and you're going to see larger, taller buildings. They can build apartment buildings build, and that's condominiums. Right. Whereas out in the county, we don't have any apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any real business out there. You want the job growth. So it's a balance, it's a delicate issue of of having announcements on a yearly basis with good jobs, good paying jobs, mm -hmm. good jobs for you to work at, whether you're in college or not, because you need that. That's, that's, the, that's the nutrition that keeps your community growing is your ability to work and pay the bills yeah. and have the things <laughs> you want. If I can't wanted. pay my land taxes, that's right. then uh, this, this building's not going to get renovated. That, that's right. <laughs> so... If we have 49 schools now with 42,000 children, with 230, 235,000 people, and we're going to double, does that mean, the question is, are you going to have another 48 or 49 schools? Well, if we Which do... Which also means land is not being taxed. That's right. But how do I afford those new schools? Right. And with better planning, better modeling, if you can use that word, with cities and counties, then we know where to look for the school. Now, other issues are going to come into play. Just the raw data of how... How are you going to move these people? Yeah, how are you going to move people? Uh, forget that element. It's not that it's not important, but just forget it a minute. How do I build 49 more schools and keep the taxes low and the fees structured down? Right. Uh, and, and, and question, if you're going to move everybody to the cities, the schools, cities, cities the schools in the city area, cities areas um, are landlocked. Oftentimes. And there isn't enough land space to build right. schools. And you're going to have to look at issues. Um, what happens to all major fast growing communities? Do you want to build your schools larger? Traditionally, Williams County Public Education has wanted to keep elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools in a manageable number mm -hmm. of students. Uh, and they vary between the elementary, the middle, and the high school. I think our largest high school, I'm looking for a thumbs up, probably 18, 
1,500 to 1,900 students in high school, somewhere along in there. Um, but if you go into some of the other surrounding counties, they have high schools with 3,000, yeah. 2,800, 2,500. So it doesn't take it. And you say, well, why don't you do that? Well, then your schools. You kind of lose the get, community and sense And you lose the, the management ability. Right. And, and education has taught us, education gurus have taught us, the smaller the classroom, the better off you are with the outcome of education learned. And so just recently you noticed in, uh, in your paper, the paper that you work for, you had 53 uh, merit winners. That's mm -hmm. one more than we had the, the year before. On 42,000 kids, that's remarkable. Right. That's not to say anything about our sports side. Many of our young people um, go on to play some sports activity at a higher institution with a full ride scholarship mm -hmm. but to get a good education. But the question is, how do I pay for another? Even if I'm, even if the numbers are off. 50 percent i'm still looking at 30 schools yeah. and i know what those rascals cost a high school today <laughs> is 65 million and it's not going to get cheaper in 25 years it's not and a middle school is about 35 to 40 and mm -hmm. elementary is about 25 to 30 million dollars each now there are things we could trim off or you could make them larger but the, the price is exponentially of that right. but i don't have to build as many of them I don't know that our community is ready to go to larger size schools, but if the people come here, state law says you have, have to, to go to school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we already know they don't like portables. No, no, so they don't like portables. They don't like portables. <laughs> so you're left with making decisions today. In 2007, that's 13 years ago, you and I both had dark hair at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and a few in the TV studio had hair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it time just goes by like yeah, that. Yeah, it does. And if I knew what I know now, you'd have, you'd have made some recommendations. But ex external things go into making yeah, long-range planning. Yeah, and, you, can't, and you can't. When the economy's nosediving and mm -hmm. jobs are falling off and businesses are filing bankruptcy. Well, today, the issue is health, is, is this virus. This, it's an international uh, epidemic that we're trying to get our hands on. What is that going to do to our, to our markets out there? Most of our products, it seems like, are made in China and yeah. Japan and, and Taiwan and Pakistan because they're low-cost products that can be brought in because our market, our labor force, um, it costs more to make them. And right. you and I want to buy a jacket and a sweater or a cup of coffee cheaper. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you just don't, the product's not raised here. Coffee, for an example. I don't know many think, people yeah. raise coffee in the United States. I don't think we have the uh, type of uh, envi uh, environment for it. Uh, so when stuff. you balance all of this, I mean, there's always something external putting pressure on from an international standpoint. The stock market's done great yeah. for the last year, year and a half. And you can argue about it all day long. But if you've got a 401k or 457 or if you're in a retirement plan of some type or if you've got, it's done, it's performed outstanding mm -hmm. in the last 15 months. But one little turn of the dial. One little hiccup. One little hiccup. And we will see what if the products are able to be made in China uh, because of sickness, because the labor market's not able to go there, then you're going to see this, 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 that dial it change. Down. It's going to trickle <laughs> down to the United States. And so we, you take all of that together, you put it in a bushel basket, like Mother said, Stir it up a little bit. Stir it up a little <laughs> bit, and sometimes you just close your eyes and say, this is what we got to do. Mm -hmm. But I do know this. We've got to come up with some different methods of helping to control the number of people come here and that are able to come here because when we put extra fees and cost on the community for housing, it didn't slow down a bit. Right, right, that, that's, which is incredible. It just didn't. 
it didn't. So what 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 is going to happen? It's it's a little of this and a little of that. Mm -hmm. It's like your household. You know, if you're trying to save money, it's not just make more money. You don't just look at your husband and say, you need to make more money and I need to make more money. Well, it's also learning how to cut back on things mm -hmm. or in cases we say no sometimes. In my family, we grew up, we just, no, we can't do it. Yeah. It costs too much. Um, but in government, you, if, you, if you cut back and um, you can, I mean, you can cut back in certain areas, but how do you cut back outside of government? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the issue of increasing lot sizes that you have to be five acres is one. Mm -hmm. Well, if you own a lot of land, Mayor, you're crazy. I don't like that. I'm not voting for you if you do that. Um, and I get that. Mm -hmm. But is but the, 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 the are what you is juggling the, the vote, or are you juggling the um, what's best for the county? You, you do what's best for the community because I took an oath that said we mm -hmm. do the best for the community. But I don't make that decision. The, right. The county commissioners do. Mine is policy making. That mm -hmm. this is another tool that we can use. And there's some collective wisdom and a lot of um, calculations going on now. Does a one acre equal the price of a five acre? Compression enters in. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when we first moved here, I'm a problem. I moved here just like yeah. you did. I wasn't born and raised here. Uh, 1980, I moved here. I bought a place in a community. I think it was $70,000. My parents thought I was crazy. It just recently sold for over $425,000. Oh, <laughs> You know, 30, 40 <laughs> years later, I haven't lived in it yeah. for years because I sold it and I thought, man, I got a good deal or moved out and somebody else bought it and sold it. And that's kind of the way this next generation, uh, because most people can't afford, the average price of a home in Williamson County is almost $500,000. Right. One minute left, they say. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get anywhere. But those are some of the complexities mm -hmm that go on when you're trying to come up with good public policy that affects yeah. your and my And it's folk. good to know that this, there's a struggle there, that, that that you are struggling to come up with good public policy. Oh, I'm a, and we'll have to continue this yeah, next time. And I'm time. a huge property rights person. Yes. And it, there's a struggle here. Yeah. So we will see you next time on County Happenings, where we'll continue the struggle on property ownership. See you next time.